but even those who are afar off, all those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, a portion to them tonight, your riches, goodness, Lord. And I also pray that you will stretch out your hands and write on the tablets of their hearts the things that you have destined for them. Even as they are hearing, I pray your angels who are in our midst will also speak in their ears concerning their destinies, concerning why they are here, concerning what they should do. Thank you, Holy Father. And I also pray, before you died, you washed the feet of your disciples to prepare them for the work of the ministry. Likewise, I pray, even as your dear saints will be seated in their chairs and hearing the word. And I thank you, Lord, your wonderful angels who are present in our midst are also assigned by you to wash their feet, to wash their hearts, to wash their eyes, to wash their ears, to anoint their right ear, to anoint their right thumb, and to anoint their right toe, to prepare them for the work that you have prepared for them. And as the high priest is adorned on his forehead with this gold plate, Inscribed with the words, Holiness unto the Lord, I pray. Tonight, they will also receive that gold plate upon not just their forehead, but on the forehead of their heart, that they, that their lives will be holiness unto the Lord. Tonight, Lord, the culmination of this whole conference, all the word that they have heard from Wednesday till now, it has all gone into their soul and their spirit. And I pray, Holy Father, today, at this moment, you will do a good work in them. As an eagle molds, I pray, even right now, as they will be seated to hear, let them experience a molding of their soul and their spirit. Let it shut the old that they may put on the new before the end of this conference tonight. Amen. So that when they depart from this building, they are going to depart as a new man, renewed, renewed in the true image and likeness of God, in true holiness, and righteousness. And I thank you, Holy Father, that even as I am praying, you have begun this good work, which your children are already feeling within them, this good work that you have begun. And I pray it will continue, continue all throughout this night. And I also pray that you will give them 
wings like eagles. They have been hearing continuously Lord, how they can be translated in the spirit, how they can be translated in the soul. Now I pray, you will give them that wings of an eagle, attach them to their back. Even now I pray, let them experience Lord, these wings of an eagle attach to their shoulder plates. As I am praying this prayer, I am seeing something very strange right now. Little, little, very small eagle wings been attached on some people's eyes. Thank you, wonderful God. And I also attached on some people's ears, little eagle wings. Thank you for these prophetic gifts, Lord, that you are imparting into your dear children right now. Right now. Thank you, wonderful God. I perceive in my spirit right now, the Holy Spirit showing me. I see him, his presence, like the Spirit of Christ, permeating his entire church. And the word of the Lord is this. You have abided and continued in the presence of God in this conference, hearing many deep things. Surely, you will begin to work together with the saints in glory. And the Holy Spirit is assigning them to you, to work together with you for the work of the Lord. I see some of them are like youth saints, some older ones, some youth looking, some even little children, children saints. They all have been summoned here, commissioned to follow you, to work together with you. Think not in your heart, why a youth or why a children? A youth or a children appears to our eyes of their physical age, but that may not be how they are in the spiritual age. Spend more time waiting on God, abiding in Christ Jesus. Learn the art of communion with the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray now that your Holy Spirit will teach them these arts. How to commune with the Holy Spirit. How to abide in Christ Jesus. And how to wait upon God. All these lost arts of biblical meditation, biblical practices that the patriarchs and the prophets and the apostles walked in. And I pray that all these rich treasures of the Spirit will be given to these your saints who have continued with you these past four days. Some things were too hard for them to understand. Yet, instead of rebelling against it, they have received those words like newborn babies would drink milk from the mother. They've received that word, Lord, and reward them for their childlike faith. Thank you, Father. 
Come on, lift up your holy hands and bless our good father. He's our good father. His grace and mercy endures forever and ever. Then see amen. amen and amen. Please be seated. Tonight is the last night. Right? Do I have your permission to go on all night? Yes. Uh, everybody okay with that? Yes. All right. You don't want me to stop anywhere, don't you? Thank you so much. I'm going to miss all of you. All right, I'm going to continue from where I stopped yesterday morning. I, shared, I started sharing with you a message that the Prophet Moses came on the 9th of August to share with me about the last day's ministry. How should it be? It should be a kingdom-based ministry. And we saw many things, how a kingdom-based ministry should be. Now we'll go on. Who will be chosen for the last day's kingdom-based ministries? Is everybody qualified? Or are some chosen, some not chosen? Many are called. The invitation always goes out for everybody. God does not cast out anybody. The invitation is for all. But only few will choose it. See, like for example, the call of salvation or the gospel of salvation was first given to the Jews. It is the Jews who are supposed to bring the gospel of salvation all over the world. But because they rejected it, except for the 12 disciples plus Paul, you minus Judas, you include Paul into the list, becomes 12. They are the founding apostles. They went all over the world. They preached the gospel. And then from then onwards, the Bible tells us blindness came on part on the eyes of the Jews. And now the Gentiles are carrying the gospel all over the world. They were chosen. Even the Lord Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the harlots, the tax collectors, they will come into the kingdom be before you. You are chosen. You are called. But because you refuse, they will be chosen. So this is how it all works. God extends His call to everybody. The call to have the richest of all His blessings are for all. But not all are willing to pay the price. You know, we all want it like the society we live in today. Fast food. It doesn't work like that. Many years ago, a dear brother who comes to a meeting came up to me for prayer and he was so broken. He kept on asking me, why is God so unfair? I said, I've never heard that before. You know, God is so unfair. I said, in what way God is so unfair? He said, everybody else gets blessed except me. I said, in what way? He said, you know, I've been praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for a long time. And I'm not getting it. But it's the little children and the young people in my church are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they are seeing angels of God. They are getting uh, goose bombs, turkey bombs, all kinds of bombs. <laughs> and I don't even get even a mosquito bite. <laughs> so he pleaded with me. He said, you see the Lord, you please pray. And ask the Lord why he's been so unfair towards me. So he even gave me a deadline. <laughs> if the Lord doesn't answer by this period of time, I'm going to backslide and go back into the world. Go back worshipping my previous gods. So I told him, if you want to go back, go. The kingdom of God doesn't lose anybody. You one person go out, another ten person comes in. 
anyway he was you know he was just simply desperate so he pleaded with me so please please pray for me and ask the lord to send an angel even if i can't see them ask the angel to come and just pinch me <laughs> i'll be satisfied with that one pinch is all that i ask i told him i can pinch you right now <laughs> Why do you need to wait for an eerie hour of the day? Right now, I can pinch you. So you know, he tears started welling up in his eyes, and I told him, "Okay, all right, don't worry. I promise you, I will pray for you, and I'll get a word from the Lord for you." So, some days passed by, and during my times of intercession, one day, as I was praying for many needs, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ visited me. So I went through all the uh, prayer needs that our partners write to us. I was praying for every one of them, and when I was through with the last one, I suddenly remembered this brother. So I told the Lord, Lord, I have one more request to put before you. So I told the Lord about this man. So the first question I asked him was, Lord, why are you being so unfair? and the lord was he had a look like been taken back by the question and uh, but he was very calm he looked at me he said what do you mean i'm unfair so i told the lord whatever this man told me the lord calmly listened to whatever i said and he said the problem is not with me the problem is with him i said what do you mean lord the problem is with him you know how fervently he's praying how fervently he's asking he's even asking for a small pinch then the lord said let me show you where the problem is the lord came near me he touched my forehead as soon as he touched my forehead i saw an open vision into his house the lord and i were standing there and we stood in his house it was a typical morning scene and i saw that he was rushing to get to work and he was hurrying his three children getting them all dressed and then a quick breakfast and then before they all left the house they knelt down to have their family prayer so they read the bible and then they sang a songs one or two songs and then he prayed for the whole family he prayed for his father he prayed for his mother he prayed for his wife he prayed for his children and then he prayed for his church pastor and then he prayed for some visiting ministers that he knew and all this while the moment he started praying the lord jesus came and stood by his right side listening to his prayer you know the bible says in psalm 65:1 that god is a prayer hearing god right whether your eyes see or don't see he is always there listening to your prayer agree to everybody yes. so that day i saw with my eyes this manifestation of the scripture it it is real so the lord was listening to all his prayer then he finished his prayer by saying lord please speak to me when he said that i looked at the lord he opened his mouth to speak to him something at that precise moment he said in the name of jesus we pray amen he ended his prayer i was shocked and the lord turned and looked at me and he said now do you understand what i meant the problem is not with me the problem is with him then the lord said my children have no time to wait on me you know i have never forgotten that phrase this past 30 years my children have no time to wait on me they expect me to behave like instant noodles you know the cup noodles two minute noodle don't laugh because that's exactly how we are behaving we expect god everything from god in instantly like those noodles it doesn't work that way you know You know all these wonderful experiences that you heard brother Neville share, Dr. Bruce sharing and my sharing. They all didn't come overnight. It took years 
of practice, years of perfecting the art before we make it a model, a working model, S tested, proven, working model, tested, and then presented. This is the way. But in meetings like this, in conferences like this, you know, especially in these last days, you experience a manifestation or the outpouring of the, the Holy Ghost. And you get a touch from God, you see a manifestation of an angel of God, or you see a manifestation of a saint of God, like someone uh, sent me a testimony on the first morning or the first night, how they saw some saints standing here while I was preaching. Now, these are called a visitation. But you should never, never be satisfied with a visitation. A visitation is a once a lifetime happening. You should rather crave or yearn for a habitation. That's what we are teaching you. Go past a visitation and cultivate a habitation. Habitation is harder because you need to practice the art. You practice the art. Visitation comes in a moment. Just to give you a foretaste. You know, sometimes if you go to a mall, uh, you'll find some of the shopkeepers putting out some sweets and they'll let you test it, right? The first time I ever went to a mall in uh, Lancaster, I was walking by this, past this counter where they had different sweets. So Pastor Sweet's daughter, who was my secretary, and she told me, would you like something? I said, no, it looks very expensive. But you can taste it before you buy. I said, really? Because we don't have such thing in India, you know? I said, are you really sure? She said, let me show you. She went, she said, can I taste this? And they scooped on a small little stick, and they gave it to her. She just sucked it like sucking an ice cream, you know? And uh, she said, would you like one? I said, oh, OK, good. So I took one. It was nice. Then I said, can I have another one? <laughs> and the sales girl was just too happy. She said, yes, of course. Then I said, can I have another one? <laughs> and another one, and another one, and another one went up about 10 sticks. And after eating 10 sticks, I just said, I had enough. <laughs> You see, <laughs> in meetings like this, <laughs> in meetings like this, those kinds of things are the samplers. Samplers, though it's real, it's not the whole package. It's just a sampler. You sample this, you sample that, you sample this, you sample that, you can sample everything, but it is not the whole package. God lets you taste it to prove to you that what we teach is real. The Lord proves His word by signs and wonders following. And you experience that. But that should not be the end. It is just the beginning. You should go on from there which is God's rich purpose for all of you. All of you can become the mighty ones that is prophesied in Joel chapter 2, verse 2. The mighty ones that is going to rise up in these last days. All of you have that potential. The question is, are you going to make it? It's like the Navy SEALs program or the Marines program. Many signed up for the program. I'm sure you have seen some documentaries about all this, right? But only a small number qualifies, passes till the end of the training program. Only a small number. It's the same way. Many are called, but few are chosen. Rather, few chooses it. Because, it gets tougher from the time you start your journey from here. 
like what our dear brother Neville shared this morning. He went to 12 years of suffering. Right? You heard it. The Lord showed him the dreams and prepared him. The Lord fore already forewarned him, you're going to go through this. Of course, although not in specific detail, which is what he's good at. So, from the time he began the journey, 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 12 years of endurance. Because he endured, and you also heard this morning what he said, of the key that he received. So, of when he walks into the door, now he's going to jut faster than a speeding bullet. Faster than Superman. It's Superman, Batman all put together. <laughs> you know, what is that going to be? It's going to be something beyond even what he has known before. See, but all that is coming after 12 years of molding. See, great things don't come easy. You know, like I told you the first day, you cannot afford to make a mistake this generation. You cannot. So God trains you, molds you, makes sure you are the right one who will not fail. You cannot fail. Just like Joseph, before he can become the prime minister of Egypt, he was spending 14 years doing an MBA degree in the prison. The best school that can teach him management. You know, that's what he learned. He learned by practice, managing a company of prisoners. He was scheduling their work schedules, taking care of all their food. He studied management in a prison environment. 14 years. Or what crime? No crime. The amazing part of this whole ordeal is, the Bible says, and the Lord was with him in the prison. Right? The Lord was with him. It was a molding process. And he endured till the end. If you want the crown, you must first endure the cross. If you cannot endure the cross, you don't qualify for the crown. Like what uh, Brother Neville shared this morning about his first pastor, a godly man. But because he could not embrace the next move of God, he fell back. Does it mean that he will lose his salvation? No. But he missed the higher ideal. You know, right now the Olympics is going on in Brazil. Out of 10, 10 races or 10 competitors, 3 will win the prize. Right? The first, the second, and the third. The third also gets a medal, a bronze medal. The second, silver medal. And the first is the gold. Now, the person who wins a bronze medal can be satisfied, oh, at least I got a bronze. But if you ask him a question, he will tell you, you know, it will still be nice to have a gold. Right? The gold is the highest possibility. But if you fail in the, to qualify for the gold, you will fall down to the next level of a silver. It is still a prize, but not as good as a gold. You could get a gold. The gold is for you. So why settle for a silver or a bronze when you can have the gold? See, this is the challenge that God is putting forth before you today. Not only God, even the cloud of witnesses are putting forth this challenge before you today. They have run their race and passed the baton to you. Now take it. Now you just have the last 100 meters to run. They have run 300 meters 
All you have to do is just the last 100 meters. And it is your job to run your race well. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember when I was in 10th grade, I was very athletic. So in our school sports, our class, we fielded a team for the 4 by 400 meter relay race. So each person runs one entire round the stadium. And I was the last runner. And the first runner did very well. So did the second runner. But the third runner, a very dear friend of mine, made a mistake. He not only ran slower, but he dropped the baton. So when, when he dropped the baton, we were in the lead, you know. So by the time he picked up the baton and passed the baton to me, I was now the last man. You know, I have to run three times more faster to win a prize. And we ran, I did. And I only qualified for a bronze. But still was better than something. Right? But because he dropped the baton, the next runner had to run three times, four times more. So, if you drop the baton, if you pick it up again, which you could, then you will have to work many, many more times harder. Because if you drop the baton, during the reign of the Antichrist, where the heat would be so strong, seven times stronger, that is the amount of heat that Nebuchadnezzar heated up the furnace. Right? Remember the story? So, similarly, history is going to repeat itself again. Two sevens are going to take place at the same time. One seven is the tribulation, the persecution. It's going to get heated up seven times. And the other seven is the glory of God will manifest sevenfold. Both will happen simultaneously. Sevenfold glory of God to counter sevenfold heat that will come from the enemy. So you must be very strong to endure till the end. Remember, folks, Matthew 24, verse 13. He that endures till the end, only he shall be saved. If you fall along the way, then you fall. Only he who endures till the end, he shall be saved. If we fall in these last days, you know, we'll end up getting the mark of the beast. If you end up getting the mark of the beast, then you're doomed forever. This is something you should never ever even consider as an option in your life. Never ever be duped by any preacher's gimmicks by saying, don't worry, God understands. Never, never be duped. Because the scriptures say clearly, anyone who takes the mark is forever lost. Forever lost. Because you are selling your soul to the devil by taking the mark. So who will be chosen for this last day's kingdom-based ministries? Joel chapter 2 verse 28. He says, my spirit, the spirit of God, will be poured out upon all flesh. And who are all the flesh? The children, the youth, the seniors, and the ministers of God. The word children here in the Hebrew refers to small children, 12 years old and below. The youth, you, you already know what a youth defines is. And senior citizens, those who are the retirees, senior citizens. You know, the definition of a senior citizen varies from nation to nation. In the East, it's 50 years old. Once you're 50 years old, you're a senior citizen. In America, 80 years is still very young. Right? 
You don't say I'm 80 years old. You say 80 years young, don't you? Okay. Even if you like to deceive yourself like that. <laughs> it's okay. You know, you can be 80 years young. I can be 50 years old. It doesn't matter. So it varies. Anyway, but according to biblical reckoning, a minister retires when he's 50. So we'll take that as an outcome. So when you're 50, you're a senior citizen. 50 years and above. So senior citizens and the ministers of God. The Holy Bible says a new anointing will be poured out upon all flesh. All flesh. And this new anointing is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit that the Apostle Peter prophesied or preached in Acts chapter 2 verse 17. He quoted Joel 2, 28. But if you analyze what happened on the day of Pentecost to Joel 2, 28, they are not the same. Because what happened on the day of Pentecost was, they were all filled in the Holy Spirit and they spoke in unknown tongues. Period. But if you look at Joel 2, 28, it says, When the Spirit is poured out on all flesh, your children shall she visions. Or prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So, seeing visions, prophesizing, seeing dreams are all prophetic in nature. This was not what happened on the day of Pentecost, which means this Joel 2 28 anointing is going to be poured out in these last days. And to give you further proof, if you read Joel chapter 2, verses 23 onwards, you will read, when will be the times and the seasons this anointing will be poured out? It will be poured out when Israel is living peacefully, when she's planting, when she's harvesting, when she builds houses. Now, in the first century, Israel was still under captive to the Romans. She was not a free nation. So when she was not a free nation, that was not the time this anointing was poured out. This anointing will be poured out when Israel...